What's going on guys? It's Akatex here bringing you guys a really quick video where I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a light setup inside of Cinema 4D in approximately 5 minutes. So this is quite a quick way to make uh, an effective, efficient light setup. So let's just jump right in. So the main tools which I'm going to be using are the planes. So you can find that under your objects tools right here. Just click and hold, select the plane at which point you're just going to have a, a 2D flat surface and uh, what I usually do from here is immediately just turn it into a rectangle so you can just do that by grabbing the yellow point dragging it off and uh, as you can see we've got a little rectangle right now so we're just going to prop that up a little bit higher than our, our surface and uh, this is going to be acting as our top light <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is immediately duplicate this a couple times. You do that by selecting your plane and then copy pasting. So we're going to go ahead and make two duplicates of that. At which point we're going to be separating them quite a bit. Not too much. You want to leave a bit of space in between though because uh, later on you'll see using reflective materials and so on you'll get quite a cool effect. So depending on how you want your lights to uh, generate light you can uh, move around your, your planes accordingly. So what I usually do is go straight into my rotate tool and my two side panels just slightly rotate them outwards like so and uh, what this does is it'll provide some, uh, some, more, some more light from the sides and you can also just drop these down a bit. Again this is uh, just the basic basic way to do this and then from here you're gonna have to find out what works best for you and for your renders and so on. So now that we've got our planes set up, which are going to be acting as our lights, we're going to go ahead and create our material. So let's do that, make a new material. And uh, first things first, we don't want any color, we don't want any specular, so we're going to go ahead and uncheck those. The only thing we're going to need is luminance, so we're going to select that. Go into texture here, prop down your man menu, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put a gradient. And what's going to happen is this is going to make it so that there's a slight fade, but we don't want it to be uh, a 2D surface like this, we're going to want it to be circular, so 2D circular. And as you can see we've got the darkest point in the center and it slowly uh, fades into a light, lighter to the outside, but we actually want the opposite of this, so here where it says gradient, you're going to go ahead and right click, invert the knots, and so what this does is, as you would expect, it just uh, inverts that, so now you've got the brightest part of your of your light coming from the center and it slowly uh, gradually turns darker. So now this is where you can choose uh, what kind of light you want. So right now we're just going to go with a very basic white light as our top. The brightness we're going to prop that up to maybe 300 percent. Obviously this is all, these are all circumstantial so you can go ahead and change those to your liking. And all you have to do is click and drag it onto your center plane. And as you can see, it applies it so that you kind of get a preview of how that's going to be uh, creating your light. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and make another version of that, but this time using slightly different colors. So again, uncheck color and specular, select your luminance, gradient, turn that from a U to a circular, invert the knots. This time, instead of using a pure white, so to change that you're just going to double click on this little box and uh, we're going to use a warmer light, so you can range between orange and yellow, it doesn't really matter, anything in between should be alright. You don't want to go too intense because it's going to make a very, very noticeable difference, so you're actually going to be looking for something that's very, 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 very light. So something like this, if not even more. And you click OK, and as you can see already, it kind of changes your, your look here. We're going to go back into our luminance settings, prop this up to about 200%. And now we can apply this to our sides. And so what this is going to do is, you're going to have a neutral white light as your top, and then some slightly warmer colors that are going to be coming in from the sides. So basically, to put this into perspective, let's go ahead and pull this up a little bit, put in a cube. And uh, let's see, let's rotate this a bit. And so now, as you can see already, it's kind of generating some shadows, but that's all right. This is very basic once again. So to get an idea of how that looks, I'm just going to quickly apply some uh, global luminescence here. And uh, if I were to preview this, you can see that already this is taking quite a bit longer because it's generating real uh, shadows. So already we've got technically a fully functioning light setup, just as it is. 
However, it's kind of unbalanced. So the next step is, or what I would suggest to do, is actually making a studio so that you've got a whole light coming around from pretty much every angle. And uh, there's a couple ways of doing this. The, the easiest way that I've found is just using a free hand. And it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. You can just click and drag and draw out kind of a, of a quarter pipe, I guess you could say, like so. It doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry. It really doesn't matter. So now that it's kind of tilted, just to fix that, click on your spline, go to the coordinates, and here where it says the rotation, we're just going to set this all to either 90 or 0, so you got to get it to whichever one is closest. So 90 goes to 90, 0, and there you go. So now it's perfectly lined up. To turn this into a 3D object, you're just going to hold Alt on your keyboard and bring it in extrude nerves. And uh, as you'd expect, it's just going to turn it into a 3D object, like so. Obviously this is a bit too thin for what we're looking for, so you're going to go into the object settings, and then here where it says movement, just bump up the depth. And as you can see, we've made ourselves a little studio, just like that. So it's quite simple, as you can see. And uh, what we're going to do now is actually apply, again, a reflective or a light, a light source to this. So similarly to the other materials, go into luminance, select that. And here you don't actually have to change more than more than that. Uh, if you want, you can mess around with the brightness and so on. Again, the colors, that's all up to you and what kind of look you're trying to get. So here we go. And now, as you can see, we've actually got a light studio. This is a light box. So we've got light coming from the bottom, three lights on top. And uh, the only real issue here is that if you try to render this out, as I'm going to show you, everything is still visible. So we're going to want to make sure that we're still getting our light. But that at the same time, if we were to render our object, all of these are invisible. And so to do that, you're just going to have to right click on whichever objects are creating your light. So in this case, it would be our three planes and our extrude nerve. And uh, you're just going to right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing. At which point, you're just going to uncheck Receive Shadows and Seen by Camera. And so as you're going to notice, for now, I've only applied it to our center, our top light. And so if I were to render that out, it is actually invisible to the camera in this moment. So what we're going to do is we're just going to duplicate that. So hold Command if you're on Mac or Control if you're on a PC. Click and hold uh, Command and then just drag it up. And as you can see, it's just going to be duplicating that. We're going to do that to all of our light sources. Make sure you do not do that to your render because that will obviously also make it invisible to the camera. And so now at this point, if I were to render this out, there you go. As you can see... All that we have left is our is our object, which is interacting with the lights in this moment. And uh, so yeah, that's actually pretty much it. It's a very simple setup. I've given you guys the basics. Now it's up to you to kind of mess with the settings, see what works best for you. Uh, I would recommend maybe using a couple more planes as your top ones. So if you want, just make these a little bit thinner, duplicate them, and move them around a bit. Again, this is just a uh, just experimenting, playing around with your with your tools and seeing what works best for you. Now, what is kind of cool though, is that if you do want to kind of have these uh, seen through your render, you would apply a normal material with a reflection here. And uh, we're just gonna turn on the brightness a bit like so. And now what we're gonna do is put it like this and uh, you should see, well, obviously now this is a bit, poorly rotated, but you should see uh, your lights reflecting off of your material. And so let's see how that looks. As you can see, slight, slight uh, detail there, but it looks kind of cool, especially once you get something a bit bigger that's very glossy. Uh, it makes it look like a professional light setup as you have real lights reflecting off of your object, but that are at the same time invisible to your camera. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's very quick. I just wanted to give you guys a couple tips on how to create your own Lightroom in a few minutes. So if this did help you out, make sure to drop a like and a comment. I'm doing my best to upload every once in a while. I'm quite busy with uh, university and so on. So I'm not obviously not as, uh, as active as I was before, but I'm doing my best to give you guys some cool tips. So if this helped you out, please show some support and uh, see you guys later.